It's time for Between the Headlines with me, Afshin Ratatsa, here on Press TV. Joining me for a look between the headlines are Victor Orlick, freelance journalist, Faroz Manji from Pambazuka News, a weekly forum for social justice in Africa, and we'll be speaking to the Pakistani High Commissioner to London, Wajid Shamsul Hassan. On tonight's show, as Obama bombs Afghanistan and Iraq gets bloodier by the day, the Taliban advance as close as 100 kilometers from the capital of nuclear-armed Pakistan. Meanwhile, in Africa, with corruption charges dropped, South Africa elects its fourth black president. And the situation in Somalia, so recently destabilized by U.S.-backed Ethiopian troops, is being discussed in Europe. But casting a shadow over all the headlines of every newspaper in the world is the international economic crisis. The largest country in the world, Russia, faces a nearly double-digit contraction in its economy in the first quarter. But first, do remember that you can join the debate by emailing us on bth at presstv.co.uk or texting us at any time, anywhere in the world, uh, plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero eight six. Those details on our website. Welcome, uh, guests. We're going to go straight to uh, this story here: the Taliban edging closer to the Pakistani capital. Well, I hope we have the um, High Commissioner on the phone. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, High Commissioner. Um, well, uh, I do know that um, I do know that uh, they have retreated in, in the past few hours. But this is the first time in world history, isn't it, that we've had uh, uh, a uh, Salafist group a hundred miles from a capital with, in a country with nuclear weapons? What exactly is going on there? Well, the the people, Taliban, are there definitely. There is no doubt about it. And now they have uh, withdrawn. They are withdrawing gradually. They, Bonaire, uh, Bonaire, which is about 100 miles away from Islamabad, they've started withdrawing, and the government has just told them, giving them an ultimatum that they better leave this place in 24 hours, and they are leaving it. But remember one thing, that we had uh, an agreement in Sawat to bring peace, and the peace has been restored, restored there. So we are not so know, not so good for women women's rights, uh, as people are saying. But do you think this is again, a again there is a misnomer and a misinterpretation of women's rights in uh, Sawat. So women have started uh, doing their household chores. They have started uh, earning their livelihood. Girls have started attending to schools. But again, there is a perception in the West. I'm sure in Iran it must not be there because Iran. Every woman wears a chadur. <laughs> in Pakistan, too, in the northern areas, every woman wears a chadur and, and a veil. I don't think everyone and, wears and, a chadur in Iran. Fact, can, I, hi, sir, can I just ask no, you? Let, let, me just, let me just ask you a question. Has anybody, has anybody seen Mrs. Karzai in public? Has anybody seen Mrs. Abdullah, Abdullah in public? Well, that's a, that's a good question, because that's I was going to ask you about Afghanistan. About the, do culture, you think, the culture is like that. Hi, Commissioner, do you think President Obama's policy in Afghanistan means that the Taliban are uh, affecting Pakistan? Uh, uh, I mean, it's affecting Pakistan. Do you think it's the Obama policy? No, that, the, Obama, uh, the, the NATO policy is to uh, fight them and drive them out. So they are being driven out, so they are taking refuge in Pakistan, the border areas of Pakistan. And that's why they have interbonnet, so they will be driven back. Pakistan will not take it you know, lying down, will not allow its uh, right to be to be abdicated to these uh, pagans. So this has nothing to do with President Obama's Muslim. policy. Richard Holbrook called your president in the past few hours. What did he say? What, what did, did he, he say to him? Richard Holbrook, the envoy, the U.S. envoy uh -huh. to Pakistan. What did he say to your president? Well, I'm asking you, because I don't know what he said. Well, no, I, I'm not sure what he said, but uh, I can imagine, uh, people can imagine what he presumably said. Well, again, said. again, the thing is that he wouldn't oppose our having a dialogue with the, these people, because he, they, the Americans themselves have started some sort of dialogue with Taliban. I understand he said it was incredible. The news over the past several days is very disturbing. You know that the, uh, this is from um, Robert Gibbs, the uh, uh, white, at the White House, but uh, so... Um, it's very, very disturbing, is what the White House is saying. Do you think, uh, do you think this is going to affect uh, the political climate now in Pakistan? I noticed no, Professor the, Musharraf the, saying he wants to step climate, back. Pakistan will not be affected by anything. We have a very strong democratic government in Pakistan. We have got all democratic governments in the provinces, and this, this uh, Sawat Peace Pact was done by a democratic government in, 
in MWAP province. They negotiated a deal, and the federal government went to the parliament to have its approval, and the entire parliament approved it. So finally, you are going to continue doing deals with the Taliban? No, we are, we are, we are dealing, the, the, you know, we are dealing with them on our terms, not on their terms. Hi, Commissioner. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Victor, well, like you can see, um, obviously, it is a very disturbing development. I, as the High Commissioner said, they have retreated now. Uh, how do you see the situation developing? Well, you know, it doesn't come as something very unexpected and all of a sudden. Obviously, they were expanding and progressing. And uh, it's my understanding that the Pakistani government has not yet... Um, created a proper strategy how to resist and how to fight this onslaught on the democratic government of Pakistan because they, are, they face a very difficult choice whether to fight a real war or to try to do its renegotiations and they were trying to do its renegotiations but somehow this um, advance uh, virtually to the close proximity of the uh, Pakistani capital um, confirms the very simple truth that they use this situation for their own purposes and which is very disturbing and very dangerous uh, given the fact that uh, the um, uh, Pakistani government uh, has the country with serious nuclear potential and so on and the danger that it can fall into the undesirable hands is, is, is very real. For Osman, it is, it is incredible, isn't it, that a nuclear armed country can be facing this sort of situation. I know China is there in the background, uh, people, people often say. Uh, the High Commissioner was talking about uh, women's rights still being, uh, being upheld in these uh, deals they're making, but um, uh, reports we're getting are that women's education is, is, is stopping in those areas and those deals are being made. Well, I mean, I think what we have is a, is a fall into the vortex, which has uh, been created by NATO and it's um, uh, the U.S. Uh, invasion of uh, both Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. I think they've um, created a political turmoil which goes beyond the borders of Afghanistan. Um, and um, people talk about the Taliban in, in Pakistan as, uh, as some kind of ex uh, external force. I, my reading of it is that actually this is a, a, a social force within um, uh, Pakistan society. I think that. Do you think Richard Holbrook understands that? I'm not sure that uh, that or he the does. Americans do. I don't think so. I think they are. Um, I think they also have a similar uh, perspective as the uh, High Commissioner put it. That this is a, some kind of um, a, a force which has been driven out of Afghanistan into uh, Pakistan. In, I think the it's the seeds have grown on both sides of the border and I think uh, the policies I mean it terrifies me that the increasing proposal proposal for increasing troops in Afghanistan is only going to breed further uh, discontent um, so remember, these are the same died. people on either side of the border we're not talking about real borders we're talking about our population which is spread across there uh, which are related to each other and we, where um, Understandably, as in, uh, as in Afghanistan, when families get bombed by Americans, um, the same has happened in, in Pakistan. And Pakistan has allowed, the Pakistani government allowed those uh, um, American flights to, to, um, to bomb Reach these. their borders. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, you will pay the price. And it's a central plank, I suppose, of President Obama's um, policy. Let's go, on to, uh, let's go on to this story, which is making headlines all around the world. Zuma leads Song of Triumph after polls put him on course for landslide victory. Jacob Zuma, South Africa's next president, thanked jubilant supporters of the ruling ANC. ANC, this party is an elephant. You cannot actually topple an elephant. Uh, let's go to you for us, Munchy, because I know Pam Bazooka covers this. Uh, yes. Covers well. Africa, and, and it's uh, got a special issue, I understand, on, on South Africa. Who is Jacob Zuma? And. Um, He's keeping his economy minister, everyone is expected. Why is there any difference with this man uh, over previous presidents? Well, politically, 